My name is TJ Craddock. I am the Chief Scientific Officer at Excision Biotherapeutics, presenting today on our work developing EBT 101 CRISPR based therapies for HIV. I need to disclose that this talk might contain some forward looking statements and that I'm an employee at Excision. Uh, and I want to start by thanking the team at Excision who have been wonderful to work with for the last year and a half. Uh, I don't get to mention that later, we're, we are currently hiring. Uh, but I also want to particularly thank our, our number of different academic collaborators, including those at Temple University, who have a number of publications demonstrating the efficacy of multi-guide targeting a virus, including two that I'll highlight today. So I'd like to, in particular, thank Dr. Uh, Kamil Kahili and his group at, at Temple University. At Excision, we're developing CRISPR-based therapies intended to cure viral infectious diseases and improve the lives of chronically ill patients. Uh, we've heard a number of, of talks looking at uh, monogenetic diseases, and as we're a bit different, I'll describe some of the unique features of targeting uh, HIV and our in our approach as, as it differs from some of these uh, uh, kind of established techniques for targeting monogenetic diseases. I'll start off by reminding that, that CRISPR had a life before gene editing uh, as a bacterial adaptive immune system, including the bacteriophage shown in this cartoon. Uh, doesn't quite do justice to the high number of virus that are attacking the surface of bacteria. Uh, at Excision, we're using CRISPR-Cas again to target virus. This cartoon now shows HIV uh, and the human cells, though in both cases, CRISPR-Cas uh, targets the DNA inside the cells. At Excision, uh, we're seeking to improve the lives of, of large patient populations with unmet medical need, including hepatitis B virus, herpes, uh, JC virus, and HIV. An estimated 38 million people worldwide are infected with the human immunodeficiency virus type 1. Uh, we've been showing the, this diagram for 17 years, almost uh, part of union rules uh, for gene editing. A single cut marked by these scissors is repaired using the cell's DNA repair machinery, resulting in generally small indels, only a few nucleotide. And this can lead to viral escape. And so I'm excited now to, to change this up uh, and show uh, the diagram on the right, whereby uh, we're using multiple guides. And in the case for HIV, two guides with three target sites. Uh, that can drive these large deletions that have minimal probability of viral escape. And I'll jump to a diagram showing the, their location. There are uh, one guide targets the LTR, and so it has a site in both the five prime and three prime ends, and a second guide targets the, a well-conserved site in GAG. Uh, so cutting at two of these th three sites can result in, in three different in inactivations, uh, including the 1KB, AKB, or 9KB deletions as shown by the boxes in the bottom. I'll jump to a video, which I hope uh, starts to play uh, here, because uh, I like this animation as it depicts the nuclease is targeting two of the three target sites in HIV, such as these targets at the LTRs, with the HIV genome shown in black and certain to the human chromosome drawn in white. Uh, the colorization helps to remind us that the target sites are in HIV, so that no target sites are in uninfected cells, are in cells with HIV excised, as in the first bullet point here on the right. Uh, the dual guide viral excision strategy also um, removes the non-human DNA to return the genome to, to normal or near normal. And as with a number of the monogenetic projects, uh, requires one-time therapy to remove this viral genome permanently. So I'll give a, a quick intro, and as certainly as we're pressed for time, uh, use this illustration of the HIV life cycle and replication cycle to remind that HIV is a retrovirus causing AIDS. And though there are medications fighting transcription and replication, EBT-101 targets the integrated HIV as, as a one-time therapy. Uh, EBT-101 only needs to target the replication competent subfraction of HIV-infected cells. So less than one-tenth of 1% of the cells in the body become infected. And the majority of the HIV DNA is not intact nor replication competent. So EBT-101 expresses SA cas nuclease, dual guide RNAs, and is delivered by AAV9. I want to point to a, a number of uh, preclinical studies that have been published uh, demonstrating the efficacy of the dual guide approach in human cells, in uh, transgenic and humanized mice, and in non-human primates. One study that I'll discuss is, is from an NIH-funded work from the Healy Lab and, and colleagues at Temple and the Gendelman Lab at University of Nebraska, demonstrating the elimination of HIV in humanized mice. This study irradiated NSG mice at birth, grafted with CD34 human hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, 
producing human T cells that are broadly susceptible to HIV infection. Four months after humanization, they were infected with HIV, and then they were analyzed for HIV persistence. Uh, they're broken into four groups, the HIV controls, the humanized mice treated with laser retroviral gene therapy, humanized mice treated with casts and guides, and the mice receiving this laser retroviral th therapy and CRISPR casts and guides. And again, it's a HIV uh, strategy uh, with the dual guides and delivered by AAV. Uh, targeting these LTR and GAG sites. The first group of mice that were left untreated, these HIV controls. The second group received a single IV injection of AAV CRISPR-Cas. The third group were left were administered laser art in blue. Uh, and then the, at the top, you can see the group. Um, the CRISPR-only line follows, but this art plus CRISPR treatment in green reconstitute the immune cells with 90% CD4 positive T cells. This... Uh, graph demonstrates uh, plasma viral load, indicating that after administration of the AV9 CRISPR-Cas, two of the seven mice showed no evidence of viral rebound uh, at, at 14 weeks. So this is certainly very exciting that, that these were functionally cured mice, the uh, first example of this. Uh, I'll quickly show this, uh, the panel at the right, uh, where uh, Timishu imaging demonstrates removal of the viral genomes that are visible by RNA scope in, in the, the controls on the left. And the adoptive transfer of the spleen and bone marrow cells were performed on each group of humanized mice to assess the HIV reservoir levels. And this is certainly a, a difficult uh, assays to do to, to determine the HIV reservoir levels. So that's why I'm particularly excited about this functional assay, which demonstrates the functional cure of these HIV infected mice. Uh, in the bottom right, uh, the mouse in, in white, uh, were these mice that, that did not have rebound demonstrated in the previous graph. And bone and, and uh, bone marrow and spleen cells were adoptively transferred to naive mice uh, that uh, did not show viral uh, infection. And so this was, as I mentioned, uh, the confirmation that there was no latent HIV reservoirs in the tissues of these treated animals, which is certainly uh, very exciting for us. Uh, Non-human primate studies were also conducted to assess biodistribution to the sites of the viral stores and to assure that no significant findings, findings were found related to safety. Uh, and the findings, including the higher dose, are currently being written up for publication. Briefly, I'll give an overview that uh, we were able to see ex vivo uh, excision. Uh, there was, we saw uh, safety, uh, widespread tissue distribution, and removal of the SIV viral DNA from the monkey genome. So a question that uh, often get is, is about the specificity. And so I want to highlight this because it's certainly a bit different. Uh, the viral sequences are, are compiled into a viral database and scanned for target sites. Uh, once we have the target sites, they go back to make sure that they're highly conserved through the viral uh, database. The next bioinformatic step before we even begin experiments is also to scan the human genome. Uh, there were a few talks today that, about this type of process, but very few are discarded. Uh, the, the viral guides are quite orthogonal, as I'll mention in a bit, to the, to the human genome. And then, as mentioned for other talks, these go into testing both in, in tissue culture and in animal models. But what I think is really exciting to see is, is the viral uh, guides have very similar site in the human genome. So we used a number of different bioinformatic methods, including some of the ones we published in past lives, to look for sites that are similar in the human genome. The total number of differences include the nucleotide mismatch or, or the bulges or gaps, the differences in length between the guide and DNA sequence. One aspect of viral targeting that even surprises longtime gene editors is this incredibly low number of sites sound. Here uh, in the red box are all the sites that were located with up to three differences between the two guides in the human genome. And there's only one. And this one site has uh, two mismatches even in the seed. So it's very unlikely that this particular site will be cleaved. Uh, so you know, when we extend this out to four or five or six differences, uh, we locate some sites in the genome but as many less than when we're targeting human genes. And for comparison, I'll show a previously published uh, guide that's targeting beta globin, where we, we found a, a great deal noir. So this is, this is certainly very exciting. This orthogonal nature of the viral sequences leads to the number of sites output uh, for both guides to be less than one guide targeting many human genes. So we've done a number of different assays for possible off-target effects, including in human cell lines with latent HIV, human primary cells, which don't have HIV, so we can see that it doesn't target uh, the human genome, humanized mouse models, uh, and these NHP studies that I, I described will, will be published soon. 
And across all of these, there's no conclusive evidence of any off-target editing or structural variations. So this has been certainly very exciting and, and certainly matching the bioinformatics that I described before. Uh, so I think that the really exciting news is that we're progressing to a first in human trial for AVT 101, a phase one to a two-part open label multi-center single ascending dose study. And we can announce the sites and other information, but it'll soon be released and available at clinical, clinicaltrials.gov, et cetera. Uh, want to mention, as I said at the beginning, that, that we're hiring. Um, and so I appreciate uh, your attention and thank everyone. And uh, again, I'll, I'll try and look for answers uh, to questions in the, the Q&A uh, tab that's attached. Thank you. Mm -hmm.